in just under half an hour. So this better be quick. Just to let you know, it's an online consultation, so I don't have to move. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and for Vlogmas, I have been uploading since November. <laughs> and yeah, I read a lot of books. For today's book, I have finished Narnia. I am alternating with the Sophia Beaufort books that were a different book for you. So if you've been bored, it's a fresh one for you today. Today's book is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, a Hunger Games novel. So where uh, you've got the uh, front cover right there. As somebody who has read The Hunger Games but haven't actually seen the films, this has made me want to watch the films. So I've been trying to figure out where they are. I think all but one is on Netflix and that's the last one part two that isn't on Netflix. Like seriously, you're going to put all but one, all but the finale? Why? 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 I haven't started watching the films yet but I do plan to because this really just reminded me that I haven't watched the movies. I started watching the first movie with my dad when we got it on DVD but there was a scratch on the disc um, when we purchased it and so we took it back and then I just never watched it. I don't know why because I really did enjoy the books but yeah this one is a prequel. I've no idea how to pronounce names and obviously I haven't heard them spoken out loud before so please bear with me as I read this blurb. Ambition will fuel him, competition will drive him, but power has its price. It is the morning of the reaping that will kick off the 10th annual Hunger Games. In the capital, 18-year-old Coriolana Snow is preparing for his one shot at Cory as a mentor in the games. The once mighty House of Snow has fallen on hard times, its fate hanging on the slender chance that Coriolanus will be able to outcharm, outwit and outmaneuver his fellow students to mentor the winning tribute. The odds are against him. He has been given the humiliating assignment of mentoring the female tribute from District 12, the lowest of the low. Their fates are now completely intertwined. Every choice Corio makes could lead to favour or failure, triumph or ruin. Inside the arena, it will be a fight to the death. Outside the arena, Corio starts to feel for his doomed tribute and must weigh his need to follow the rules against a desire to survive no matter what it takes. So uh, this is in science fiction, young adult fiction, and it's uh, 540 pages. I read the majority of this book on my phone, where it was recorded as 801 pages. Because <laughs> obviously, um, my phone is significantly smaller than my iPad. I say significantly, um, it's still a very big phone. <laughs> yeah. The fact that it says science fiction and young adult fiction, I'm just like, you're not going to put dystopia future in there as well, because that's what The Hunger Games is. It's set in the future. It's set in a dystopia. So why is that not on the genre? Please bear with me. I am eating fruit. I've got some pineapple on the go, some watermelon, and some melon. I was going to say, that's not mango. <laughs> but yeah, I hated Corio. That's with the nicknames he's given by his family. And I find it so much easier just to say Corio rather than completely repeating Coriolanus in my head without reading it so whenever I saw the book I just called him Cor or Corio but yeah he lives with his cousin and the grandma <laughs> yeah so um, this is like the future president he's president snow from the Hunger Games and this looks at him as a teenager at school at the 10th Hunger Games where they decide to get students involved and to have the student mentoring the tributes Corio is not the most likable person to be honest and throughout the book I was just like god he's just so sheltered <laughs> and so naive and as he watches the people around him and the way he claims to not be in control of his actions throughout the book like there's little things where, he, where it says stuff like oh before he even knew what he was doing and it's just like oh he knew what he was doing because it's written in the third person but yeah that first bit ambition will fuel him competition will drive him that is essentially choreo throughout the whole book it's ambition all the way through even though he claims a bit of a spoiler because he basically he falls in love with the tribute he's assigned called lucy gray lucy gray baird the fact that rachel zegler has been cast as lucy gray meant that i had her in my head as i read the book and i was just like 
that's really really good casting obviously this, the fact that it's called the ballad of songbirds and snakes go reading i was just like what the hell is that title i really didn't understand it but reading it you realize how much music is so heavy throughout the book there are so many songs in this book it's going to be so interesting to see when if i when we finally did see the movie have i don't even know if they started filming it yet i know they've announced the, the casting of lucy gray but i don't know anything else it's probably worth something googling at some point because we've got the first pictures being released why has he got a buzz cut? Oh, is that for later? Because he starts off with curly hair. <laughs> I was looking at the picture thinking, why is his hair so short? And it's like, oh yeah, because it's probably representing later in the story when his hair gets cut off. Tom Blythe as Quario. As a young Donald Sutherland. Got Rachel Zegler as uh, Lucy Gray Baird. Hunter Schaefer as uh, Tigress Snow, which is Quario's cousin who he lives with. We've got Peter Dinklage as being in it, but it doesn't say he was playing. We've got Viola Davis. I'm assuming that Viola Davis is playing the Doctor. What's the point of being announcing the cast without saying who they're playing? But, uh, yeah, it feels like a long one because it's a long one. I have seen some of you saying about how slow this book starts off, and I'll admit, it did take me a little bit longer to get through the first couple of hundred pages, but there was enough in there to keep me going. It's basically separated into, like, three or four parts. You've got before the games, the games itself, after the games, and then after after the games. <laughs> you know, if you haven't read the book so you don't want to know spoilers, just don't go for any further than this. <laughs> and I mean it, if you don't want to know what happens in this book, just skip. I've got about ten minutes until I start getting ready for that doctor's appointment. So come on, Debs, let's get on with this. Yeah, so as it, it says, he's 18 years old, Corio is, and he is chosen as a student to be a mentor for a member of the games the snow family has basically kind of just gone down he lives in a top floor apartment with his cousin and uh, the grandmama and they fall on hard times they barely know where the next meal's coming from they're really struggling and so when uh Koyo is announced as being a mentor for the games um, he's just thinking, oh, this will put me back on top. But then he's just assigned District 12, and he's like, oh, this is the bottom of the bottom. And he's determined. He's basically there going, snow will come out on top. That is a theme throughout the book, snow will come out on top. Throughout the book, he does make quite a lot of mistakes, I'll make that. <laughs> Sometimes he's just like, oh, really? Really cool, what are you doing? So when you first meet Lucy Baird, when she is announced for District 12, she, um, when her name is announced, she drops a snake um, down the dress of a girl in District 12, who you later find out is the daughter of the mayor. Basically, the girl doesn't like Lucy, and so Lucy thinks that her name being called in the briefing wasn't an accident. Basically, Lucy thinks that um, because the two girls don't get along, that Mayfair got her father to announce Lucy's name at the reaping. As well as dropping the snake down Mayfair's dress, Lucy sings at the reaping. And that is how she basically gets all the districts on side. They're just like, oh, we never really had any faith in anybody from District 12, because it's the lowest of the low. And so when she starts singing, they basically start to get everybody on side. So Koryo works with it. You know, where they have the interviews, instead of getting to know her, he just says, just sing, just sing. When he first meets Lucy, he meets them at the uh, train station, where all the tributes are being brought through, and he's the only one there to welcome them. He's there with, like, a flower and gives it to her, and then he um, goes with them, with all the tributes to where they're being kept, not realising that they are on the way to the zoo, where they are dropped into an enclosure, um, where everybody is there watching. In the moment of panic, he starts thinking, oh my god, what am I going to do? Lucy tells him just to own it. And so he just owns it. And he goes and meets everybody. Basically, Lucy gives him the confidence to go forwards. But yeah, upon first meeting, he just thinks he's fallen in love with her. And you see his infatuation with her growing throughout the book. I had a conflicting relationship with Corio while reading this book. Because there were times when I really hated him times when I thought it was alright and then times when I was just like mate what are you doing? He's a bit of a backstabbing baddie in a way because the amount of times he tries to convince people he's friends with them and then he just turns his back on them it's just ugh. having somebody like that at the focus of a book and you don't really see him get any better well to be fair he does something nice at the end but it's for his own gain any nice thing he does is for his own gain so yeah he's quite a selfish kid really 
and he's 18. He's like 17, 18 for the majority of the book. But because he's been in the capital his whole life, it's all he's ever known. And when the kids are forced to um, think about like what's good about war and how they come up with ideas for the games to kind of help the officials who really should be just doing their jobs instead of getting information from the kids and stealing it, which is basically what happens. Corio comes up with the idea of betting on the games and saying, because it's trying the idea of how to engage the audience. And uh, Corio says, um, what if we make it so that there's something in it for them so that they can bet on tributes after there's a point in while they're while the tributes are in the zoom and they realize that nobody's been fed um, some of the other mentors decide to bring food to feed their tributes because they're just like they're gonna die straight away if they don't have any energy and substance so they make that part of the games as well so that they can like sponsor tributes they have these bands so that they um during the games the mentors have these bands so that they can see the donations coming in and they can send stuff into the games you see this on obviously in the later books and the films about how that's evolved from the time that when Corio came up with it. But yeah, the breaking up of the sections was the thing that probably kept me engaged the most, knowing what was going to come next. It was like, oh, okay, so here's when Corio meets Lucy and this is him getting to know and figuring out how to market her for the games. At first he has thinks that there's no way that she's going to win. So at this point he might as well just make her a favourite. You know, he uses these things, even if she can't win, I still want to get the audience on side. So that's what he tries to do. And it's mainly because Lucy Gray Baird is a singer. And so that's what he does with her. Lucy admits she's not from District 12. She's not a district. Uh, she's part of a family band that just goes around performing. So when you actually get go from him first meeting her and figuring out how to market her for the games and then going to the point where he's like, oh, actually, she could possibly win this. Yeah, the th I'll admit the thing that basically there's cheating involved from both him and Lucy because uh, Corio has because his parents are dead they died in the big war he has his mother's compact which has a rose scented powder in it he's always kept this quite close to him because it reminds obviously it reminds him as smells like his mum so he keeps that but then as he starts developing feelings for Lucy he empties the compact and gives the compact to Lucy saying this is a little thing of me that you can have and I want you to give it back if you do make it out of the games. I don't know what his plan was if you didn't make it out but at that point I think he's just so infatuated with that he doesn't care so he gives her the compact and she sneaks some rat poison and puts it into the compact where his mother's makeup used to be. So that's part of the cheating the fact that Lucy has rat poison on her so that she can poison the tributes while she's in the arena um through their food and as they scavenge and things she can do stuff like that but the thing that makes the ultimate cheating from choreo which comes back to bite them on the bum is the fact that as they are preparing for the games because obviously the kids are students and they are still working basically there are these multicolored snakes that are being kept in the lab and when uh, Corio writes an essay, he's supposed, it's supposed to be a class essay, but he ends up just writing it all by himself, just because after one of their classmates passes away, he, he goes, you know what, I'm just going to keep writing because I don't want us all to fail and I feel like I need to do something. So he writes it all and hands it in. When he goes to hand it in, he's with one of his classmates, a female classmate, and um, he says, oh, we did it together. He kind of lies. He's there trying to imply that the girl was involved as well. He does not know about the issue with the snakes, which I'm about to tell you. The essay that he wrote is put at the bottom of a tank of multicolored snakes. He is told to retrieve the essay. So he manages to get a page out. The snakes don't bother him at all. But then the girl puts her hand in. But because her scent is not on the paper, the snakes attack her. So it's kind of a scent thing. It's just like, because Corio's scent was on the paper, they know not to attack him because they're already familiar with his scent. They're not familiar with her scent, therefore they attack her. Um, later in the book, Corio realises that the snakes might quite possibly be about to be dropped into the arena where the games is happening. Um, this is a point where it's one of those, oh, before he even knew what he was doing, he was putting something into the tank. Uh, basically, he used to like smuggle Lucy food in order to kind of like bulk her up a little bit before going into the games because she was starving. And so he has this handkerchief, I think it is, um, which has Lucy's scent on it. 
and also had food on it. This is a moment where it says, oh, and before he knew what he was doing, he dropped the handkerchief into the tank. So straight away, the snakes know Lucy's scent, so they know not to attack her. So when the snakes are dropped into the arena, they have no reason to attack Lucy because they already know her scent. They start attacking everybody else. They don't attack Lucy, but then Lucy starts singing and she entrances all the snakes. But then it's one of those things where because she entrances the snakes with her song, she it becomes a bit of a question of will anybody actually find out? Because it just makes it seem like Lucy was able to charm the snakes. Um, but as I said, it comes back to bite them on the bum because when Lucy does finally win the games, everything that they did together is exposed. They find his mother's compact with a rat poisoning, so they know that they cheated that way. And also, the handkerchief was found at the bottom of the snake bit. They know he cheated. And that's the point where instead of winning the wonderful prize of a scholarship to the university, or college as they call it in America, instead they go, oh, actually... We know you cheated and so uh, you're not going to university, we are going to send you to train as a peacekeeper. And that's where he chooses to go to District 12 for his training, kind of under the illusion that maybe he'll be reunited with Lucy, even though he has no idea what's going to happen to Lucy after being discovered cheating in the games. But at the same time, he knows that what he did was worse than what Lucy did, so he's just thinking maybe she's just allowed to get on with it and maybe she's going to go back to District 12 and perform again, which, spoiler, she does. And they get reunited. They get involved in a lot of hoo-ha at the end. Um, but yeah, sorry for the interruption. This is 10 minutes later for me because uh, I had my appointment, which it went well. I've been given some advice of what to do to observe the issue for a couple of days. Um, but yeah, I've been given some advice, which is so we're all good. All right, where was I on the Hunger Games stuff? As I said, I saw reviews that said about how slow the beginning is and how all the action ends up in, like, that last section. Um, but I do feel like there was enough to keep me entertained all the way through. I liked having the backstory. I liked seeing Corio in the lead-up to the games. and Because, basically, you see how his personality ebbs and flows with what's going on around him and by the end of it you realise how he really as a person hasn't changed that much. I'll admit he does grow up while he's in the Peacekeepers but at the same time the stuff that he learns comes from a very sheltered naive place. He still looks down upon the districts. How it ends up with him and Lucy it was just like um, because I'd heard rumblings about what happened at the end and it was just like surely not he's in love with her so surely not this is surely he's not gonna try and do that and then when he did at the end I was just there going why 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 but at the end you realize that it's because it's all about choreo snow lands on top and yeah you just realize just how selfish he actually is and you know, you are aware of his selfishness throughout the book where he always seems to be looking out for himself. He's always thinking about, like, what's in it for me? Even with his so-called friends, he it always comes back to himself. And, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to the film. And I really need to watch the other films. <laughs> so, as I said, like, I started watching the first film. There was a scratch on the DVD and so me and my dad never actually watched it. So I'm kind of hoping to watch one of the movies today before I go to my shift tonight. I just... I really enjoyed this book. I've seen the reviews that say it's a slow start. And it is a little bit of a slow start. Just because there's so much backstory to get through to understand where we are in relation to the fact that it is the 10th Hunger Games. And getting that backstory about the Snow family. Which is relevant going forward. Because at the end it does come back to Corio's father. But yeah. I just, I, I, do, I enjoyed this genre, science fiction, young adult fiction, dystopian future, even though it's not on here, it most definitely is. Target audience, young adult 13 plus at 540 pages, even though as I was reading it on my phone it kept saying 801 pages and I was just there going at the 400 page mark, I was like, I'm halfway through. <laughs> the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins, a Hunger Games novel. There you go. Yeah, I just really enjoyed it and I just, yeah, as I said, I love the concept of it. It's just so interesting and I hope that, you know, we're all paying attention because, again, you know, as with any dystopian future, you don't actually want this to happen. I don't want the world to become districts where we all start pitting each other and killing children in an arena. Anyway. <laughs> so, 
yeah, this feels like a long one, mainly because I was interrupted in the middle because of my appointment. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like if you like this video. Um, it lets me know that you're liking and watching the content that I make. And to be fair, I know that not everybody likes the same stuff, but um, if you are enjoying the book reviews, which is the majority of this channel, <laughs> I can't believe just how much I've read this year. Anyway wrap this up Debs because you've been doing with this for a while um but yeah I will see you tomorrow with another video Mwah. stay safe everybody